Hello Internet! So tonight, we're going to wrap up the multi-part series that is carb cleaning videos. Uh, and there's a couple other videos on this where I show you how I removed them from the bike. Uh, we went through disassembly and cleaning. This is the last video I think I'm going to make on the topic. And in this video, tonight's video, I'm going to show you how to put the carburetors back together. I'm going to show you both an individual carburetor and then the, the bank of four carburetors. So, if you haven't seen those other videos, I'll, I'll put a link somewhere up there uh, so you can check both of those out if you're, you're so inclined. Otherwise, I'm going to set the camera up over here so you can see what I'm doing and we'll, we'll put carburetors back together. So since the last video, I have taken apart all four carburetors and I've cleaned each one of them. Uh, they've been through an ultrasonic bath a couple of times. I've passed gauge wires through all of the orifices and blown everything out. Uh, additionally, I have cleaned all the brass in acetic acid and then tumbled it with walnuts. Um, I've wiped down the diaphragms just gently with alcohol and I think everything's good. So I've got all the parts now, everything's clean. I'm going to set you up here on the bench so you can see what I'm doing. And I think what I'll do is I'll show you just one of these at random. I'll show you how to assemble. What is this? This is the number two card. So we'll go through, I'll show you how to assemble this, and then I will assemble the other three, and then we'll look back again and I'll show you how to put all these back together into a bank of carburetors. Uh, when I put together these carburetors, uh, I do it kind of in, in three steps. The first is I assemble everything that goes in the float bowl. The second, I install the slides and the tops. And third, I install anything that goes on the outside. So I'm going to start with the float valve. Uh, what you want to do is make sure you install a new O-ring and that you don't forget the little filter screen. I like to coat O-rings in silicone grease. If you don't have this, you can get it from the plumbing section of like Home Depot or Lowe's. Alternatively, any sort of silicone based lubricant should work. Coat the seals and it should slide. It should slide right in place with a little click. So with the seat in there, and then we can install the screw. And you don't want to tighten this down very tightly. The threads are small and it's easily stripped. So with the float valve seat in place, the next thing we want to install is the main jet holder. And that simply screws in place and you tighten it down with an 8mm wrench. As with all brass parts in this carburetor, you know, tight is tight enough, as my dad would say. Uh, they're easily stripped and they don't need a lot of force to hold them in place. So we've got now the valve seat and the main jet holder. So with the main jet holder in place, the next thing we can install is the main jet. There is a small o-ring that sits between the main jet and the holder. I think it probably seals the main jet to the emulsion tube. So don't forget that. I usually coat it in silicone, install the o-ring first, and then use the main jet to kind of push it in place. Once that's in, I like to use the back side of a butter knife to tighten up the main jet. I do that because it fits in there well and it doesn't strip out the head or bugger this up. So with the main jet in, we can install now the pilot jet. And it's straightforward. It fits in this hole and you just stick it in there and tighten it down with a screwdriver. The last thing to install before we can put the float bowl in place is the needle holder. It has an alignment groove cut into it that aligns with a pin inside the carb body. So the way I install it is I bring it in from the top, get it to fall down in there, and then I use something like a Q-tip or screwdriver or really anything that will rotate it. And I rotate it until it aligns that tab. And once I have it in place, Once it's in place, you can install the hollow bolt and the washer. And when you install this hollow bolt, be super careful with it. They're fragile and they have a tendency to shear where the threads meet the head. 
I usually put them in hand tight and then give them just a slight bit extra twist. So with that in place, the last thing we do here is install the float. This one's pretty straightforward. Install the valve and then rotate that little tab there so it, it will mate with this tab on the float. Slide that tab into the valve and then insert the pin. And once you have this in place, flip the carb around a bit, let that float move up and down and make sure it moves freely. And that all looks good. Now that the float is in place, we can install the float bowl. I'm reusing the old gasket simply because I did not have the foresight to order one before I started this project. I'd recommend, you know, that if you have a little extra time when you're doing your carb work that you get a replacement float bolt gasket. Especially if your gasket is 30 years old. I replaced this one a few years back when I did the initial carb clean back when I built the bike. So I'm going to use that to justify reusing the old gasket. Now since this is my number three carb, one of these tabs holds the throttle position screw, so I'm going to only put in three. That last screw will go in when we install the throttle stop. Okay, so the float bowl, or the bottom side of the carb, is buttoned up. Now we can switch over and do the top side. So we'll install the diaphragm, the spring, and the top cap. To install the slide, and you know it's pretty straightforward, the only real thing to watch out for is that this tab fits over the alignment dowel. When you slide it down in place, make sure that the needle fits in like it should and then push the gasket in and make sure that tab fits around that alignment dowel. Once that's in, um, you'll put in a spring and then hold the diaphragm in place. Make sure that it doesn't pop out of that gasket recess and put the carb top on. And the spring fits over that tab in the top of the top cap. Okay. So that went right down. There's no gaps that would tell me that the diaphragm moved and I'm pinching it. So we can install the screws. Uh, similarly to the float bowl, the top screws for this one also support the throttle bracket. Uh, also support the throttle cable bracket. So I only have two screws here. When that throttle cable bracket is installed, the other two screws will go in. Once you have this tight, reach in and just push up on the slide and make sure that it moves freely. So now we've got the top buttoned up, we've got the float buttoned up. We'll do everything now on the outside. The first thing we want to do is probably the enrichment circuit. So you get your enrichment plunger and there's a spring that fits over top. So I usually insert the plunger, install the spring, and then thread on the cap. So this cap is screwed in using a 12 millimeter socket. There's not a lot of clearance here. So what I've done is ground down a deep well to where it, it clears around the body. And tighten it down snugly but not too much. It is brass and like all the other parts you can strip it. Pull on it, make sure everything works. And then the last thing we're going to do is install the pilot screw. The only real important thing to know with this is it's got this super tiny washer and it's, it's very easily lost, so don't forget that. It's the pilot screw, slide on the spring, slide on that tiny washer, and then fit a new O-ring. So you have something that looks like that. Put a little lube on the O-ring and push it in place. Now way back when we took these carbs apart, you should have counted the number of turns that this screw was set to and written that down. So whatever that measurement is, 
you'll want to reset this pilot screw to that. So using that flat blade screwdriver, very gently tighten this, this screw down until it seats. And by seats, I mean you feel a little bit of resistance. You don't want to tighten it down too tight or you can actually deform either it or the aluminum. So on this particular carb, I had two and a quarter turns off seat. So I have seated the carb now and I'm going to back it out two and a quarter turns. So there's my quarter, half, one, half, two. So I have finished assembly now of all four carburetors. They all turned out just fine. It actually takes a lot less time when you're not recording a video. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to put them together. And this is, you know, there's really not much to this. We're going to add or install the fuel rail connectors and the float bolt connectors. And then we're going to install the brackets and we're going to install the throttle cable guide and the throttle stop. So let's start first with the fuel rail connectors. I'm going to build these in two parts. I'm going to connect one and two. I'm going to connect three and four. And then I'm going to meet them in the middle and join them all together. Let's connect now carb one and two. First thing we're going to do is install the fuel rail connector. Be sure to coat it in some sort of lubricant. I'm using silicone. And slide it into the fuel hole. Make sure that the o-ring seats completely in the housing. Also, do the same thing with the uh, float bowl vents. These are angled such that when they're on the bike, they point upward. So let's see, how does this go on the bike? These go on the bike like this. So when I install the vent hoses, I want to make sure that they point upward. So I've got my fuel connector and I've got my vent hose. We'll push those two together to join the two carburetors. And you'll notice now that we've got the synchronization springs. The way these are supposed to fit together is the paddle from one fits between the seat and the spring on the next. So you've got the lower spring, which is where the adjustment occurs, and the upper spring is where the connection happens. The way I put these together is I use a flat blade screwdriver to compress the spring, and then I slide the paddle in, beneath, in between it. So now you can see here you've got the spring, the paddle. This is the part where the screw connects to the paddle, and then you've got the screw and spring. So that when you turn this screw, it moves the position of this paddle and synchronizes the carbs. So to keep these guys together now so that they don't pull apart as we work on the rest of it, we're going to install the brackets between these two carbs specifically. Now there are two types of brackets. There's this type and there's this type. This one connects the two inner carburetors together and this one connects the outer two or the pairs. So we're going to install this one I suppose. Let's see looking at the patterns of wear. This one has got this extra hole. So this is the one that supports the enrichment knob. So this one goes between carbs three and four. So we're going to use this one. Note that it's just four holes, nothing else. It installs such that the bracket points upward. So the flat part points towards the carb top. Once it's in place, simply install the screws, tighten them up, but leave them just loose enough so you can wiggle the carbs around as, as the full assembly comes together. All right, so that's carbs one and two joined. We're gonna set these aside now and we're gonna work on carbs three and four. Connecting carbs three and four is darn near identical to connecting one and two. Uh, install the fuel connector, install the vent tube, and then connect the synchronization screws or the butterfly. So first, I'm going to install the fuel connector, a little silicone, and send it home. Make sure I got the right carb here. Do the same thing with the fuel vent hose. With the <laughs> Do the same thing with the vent hose. Make sure it points up towards the carb top. Then slide the two carbs together, just like we did on the first set. 
and use a screwdriver to compress the spring and align the butterflies. Once that's done, make sure they're pushed together and then we'll fit the other bracket just like the first. Now there is a difficulty here or something that's different as opposed to the first one and that's that we have to include the bracketry for the enrichment circuit. So I'm going to put one screw in and that's in the very far uh, hole and then I'm going to grab the enrichment bracket and we'll install that. Okay, so this is our enrichment bracket. The big thing here is that this piece with the little alignment dowel, I guess, attaches such that the nylon bushings for the pivot mechanism install downward. So kind of like in this orientation. That way, when that's on, it can actually engage the enrichment uh, plunger. So I should mention that this is temporary. We will pull this bracket back off to actually install the enrichment. So now we've got carbs one and two together, and we've got carbs three and four together. The next thing we're gonna do is join the two so that we have one carb bank. So to connect now carbs one and two with carbs three and four, I mean it's, it's ultimately just more of the same. You've got your fuel T, which is where the fuel hose actually connects. Lubricate those O-rings, just like you've done before. Insert them into the opening in the carb fuel rail. And then make the other connection. So connecting these together is very similar to the way we did one and two. Push down on the spring with a screwdriver, slide the paddle in between the spring and the screw, and push them together in place. And now to hold these together, we need to install, there's a bracket that goes between them. That's this one here. So very carefully flip them back over. Install this bracket so that the bend in it faces upward. And bolt them in place just like you've done the others. This is the main bracket. And what it does is it runs along the bottom of the carbs and ties the whole bank together. Now one thing to note here is when this sits on the bike, it sits like this, and this fuel rail needs to point downward. So make sure that the uh, fuel hose T is oriented in the middle of the carb set before you install the bracket. This bracket installs such that it bends downward with this this bent facing towards the, the top of the carb. Alright, now we've got the carbs bolted together. Before we move on, just take a look and make sure everything looks like it's assembled correctly. Double check to make sure your butterflies all move smoothly. Uh, your enrichment bracket should be on the right. All of the enrichment plungers should point towards number uh, cylinder number one. And your two vent tubes should be aligned so they point upward like you see here. So now that we're here, the next thing we're going to do is install the enrichment. And this can be a little bit finicky, uh, but we're going to get through it. And the way this goes together, or the way this works, is you've got a rod, and this rod passes through a series of sliders, and these sliders are different. So number one has a really long arm on it to engage the edge of the plunger. Number two, I think, is that one. Number three, and then number four is the mirrored image. So what we do, or the way we're going to put this together, is we're going to lubricate the contact points on this shaft. We're going to put a slider on each plunger, and we're going to run the shaft through until we've captured each one of the four sliders. So the way we're going to do this, we're going to start with number one. We're going to take the slider, and we're going to slide it over the end of the enrichment plunger so it engages the plunger and then we're going to take the rod and slide the rod through the slider and into the carb body so that you have something kind of like that and we're going to push it through and we're going to keep doing that until we have all four of these enrichment plungers as I slide this rod through I should note that these shorter sliders one of them is a mirrored image, so you can see it's mirrored and it's slightly offset. 
This one goes in between carbs two and three, so that it clears the uh, cable as the cable moves in and out. So when you put this one in, make sure that this mirrored one with the offset is in, uh, is in between carbs two and three. All right, so now I've got the rod through all of the sliders and that rod has little divots cut into it where each one of the bolts tightens down. So find that, find those little divots and align them with the screws and then tighten the screws down. All right, so I've got these three screws tightened down. I can't get to this one because of the bracket. So I'm going to remove this bracket. And that will give me the access I need to tighten down this last slider. All right, so now that we've tightened these all down, as I pull on this lever, you can see that all four enrichment plungers move together. So if you remove the nylon bushing from the bracket, it installs so that the flanged portion goes towards the inner side of the bracket. Now the way this works is you've got your plunger. Your plunger passes through that first nylon bushing. And there is, here, <laughs> there is a retainer. And what this is, is this is the piece that clicks it into the various positions. So as you pull the plunger out, it clicks it either, either to half or full enrichment. This installs just like this. So it fits over that nylon bushing so that it's oriented upward, like so. So put the nylon bushing in, lubricate, and then install that keeper. So go ahead and screw that bracket to the carb assembly. Once that bracket is bolted on, take the plunger, apply a little bit of grease to it so that uh, the detents move smoothly, and then slide it through the end of that lever and through that keeper and you'll push it through and you'll hear it click. And work it or push it until it goes through the far bushing and sets and you'll hear it pop and that's just simply those detents moving around. So once you get it here, now we need to attach it so that when you pull on it, it pulls on this lever. And that is done with that little circlip that hopefully you didn't lose. So the way we connect that up is push the plunger outward a little bit and slide the lever out so that you have enough room there to get the uh, circlip on its groove. So I am going to wedge a screwdriver in there to hold that in position. And that circlip goes right in that groove. And just push it until it pops on. So push it on and then use a pair of pliers to make sure it seats. You can see that there. Now when I pull on this shaft, or when I pull on this knob, it pulls the plunger, which also then pulls that rod and the enrichment plungers. So make sure yours moves kind of like this, and then you can clean off all the excess grease. So that's the enrichment assembly installed. There's two other items we have to put on this carburetor before it's done. One is the bracket which sets the idle speed, and the other is the bracket which supports the throttle cable. So the next one we're going to install is the bracket that supports the throttle cable. So flip the carbs upside down so that the bowls are facing up. And this bracket has a couple of parts. It's got a screw which actually engages this throttle stop, and that's what sets your idle. It's got a spring and it's got a bracket. So the spring fits on the screw and the screw threads into the bracket. Now you have to put the bracket in place before you put the screw in. Uh, otherwise you won't have access to the, to the screws that hold it in place. So the bracket sits so that it's held in place with the screws for the float bowls for the two inner carburetors. And those are the screws that have a little locking washer on them. So now that that bracket's in place we can install the throttle stop or the idle adjustment screw. The spring goes on such that the spring sits on the screw side like so. 
and then tighten that down so it contacts the throttle stop. You actually want it to contact it and then go just a little bit further so that the butterflies are open, otherwise your bike won't idle when you first start it up. So now we've got the throttle stop installed, we've got the enrichment installed. The last thing really to do on these carburetors is install the throttle cable bracket. So this bracket is installed such that the cables come off and face towards the front of the bike. So these cables sit on the bike like so. We'll install it like this so that the brackets, um, so that the bracket orients the cables towards the front of the bike. The bracket sits and it uses the screws for these two top caps to hold it in place. All right, so that, that is now the throttle cable bracket. With this cable bracket installed, these carburetors are done. We've got the enrichment linkage all working the way it should. Uh, we've got the butterflies and that linkage working correctly. We've got our fuel rail installed the way it should be, and we've installed our float vents. So there's nothing left to do to these carburetors other than install them on the bike. So I think that's it for this carb cleaning video series. I hope that you enjoyed it, at least perhaps I hope you got something out of it you can use. Um, hell, maybe you even went along and you got your carburetors cleaned as well. So these carbs are done, they're ready to go back on the bike. I, uh, I don't think I'm going to make a video for that, for installation, but I do plan to have a couple of carb tuning videos coming out sometime in the near future. Uh, specifically one on carburetor synchronization and then one on how to tune the pilot circuits or tune these carburetors using a wide band O2 sensor. So if either one of those topics is of interest to you, uh, go ahead and subscribe and it will let you know when I get those posted. Um, I look forward to getting these back on the bike and I look forward to hearing this thing run. So you'll have to wish me luck on that front. Uh, but with that, I think this video series is done. So. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this, especially if you watched all four videos. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.